So I thought I would uh, have a YouTube session on using a simulator program for basically preparing for quarter mile drag racing and seeing what gear selections are best, what shift points, what tires, all kinds of things. Um, and just to validate where I'm at with the project so far in terms of what the potential for the car is. So um, what we're seeing here, uh, and if you can look at the mouse, um, so the stock engine torque and horsepower numbers are, are in the in columns B and C. And you can see that the engine's producing most of its power, a little under 240 horsepower, um, between 7,500 and about 8,200 RPM. And it's a solid lifter, you know, 288 race cam, uh, 16 valve race cam setup. So it's uh, it uh, it'll rev quite high. The thing that keeps it from revving to nine plus is that it's a stroker. It's a 95.5 millimeter crank. So you start to put a lot of stress on the motor, the side loading on the uh, bearings and everything with the uh, the big stroke. But it revs nicely to eight. So I'm going to sort of do all my stuff. At, below 8100 um, and I've got the ability with and I'll just call it the um, this is the uh, nitro setup for the Holly ECU and pulse width modulating I'm, I'm running this Wizards of Nitrous solenoid which is a um, called a quadrinoid and it has a variable depth plunger which lets you if you don't want to flow a ton of nitrous and in my case 60 80 horsepower is all, all I'll ever need with this small motor and uh, I've got very tight tolerances in the engine and I don't want to put a lot of heat into it and um, have too much thermal expansion and risk damaging the engine um, and frankly it's got tons of capability with only a small amount of nitrous so what I'm doing here is I'm I programmed using this other table um, the pulse width modulation at 35 hertz so that this 35 hertz number because of that variable depth plunger reduce the depth of the plunger I can increase the frequency it improves the um, um, the atom like the um, the fine fine control um, a lot of uh, nitrous nozzles can or uh, solos can only use maybe 15 to 20 hertz as the frequency so this is a good good thing to have this this difference. Um, the other thing is uh, I can set what I want for fuel tear ratio under nitrous, and I'm running basically 13 to one, normally aspirated, and then I'll slightly fatten it up to 12.8. Some people run nitrous a lot richer than this, but my engine is quite efficient. It doesn't need to be over overly rich. Overly rich will cool the nitrous down and help protect the engine but uh, kill power and I'm not putting a ton of nitrous in so I can probably stay with my current plugs and um, yeah we'll, we'll look we'll, we'll check the plugs after a couple of runs to see how they look how gray they are or white they are or black they are anyway so what I've got here is this gives me a total of 200 foot pounds of torque if I have the modulation at 50% and then dipping back down, this is sort of the inverse of the torque curve. So if I go back to um, this setup here, what I'm doing is I'm using 60 horsepower jet. So if you pulse the nitrous, see this column here, if you pulse it at 100%, oh, sorry, it's over on this side here. If you pulse it at 100%, you get 60 horsepower. Um, if you pulse it at 50%, you get 30 horsepower. But what I'm doing is I'm ending up calculating what I need to achieve a perfectly flat torque curve and you see that I only need about 25 to 35 horsepower of nitrous throughout most of the operating range to, to end up with this beautiful uh, flat torque curve. Now remember with a, a fixed amount of horsepower in the nitrous the amount of torque increase becomes much higher as a percentage of so over here in column H you can see that the nitrous at 100% flow at 8,000 RPM is only adding 25% power. But at 50% power down at 2,000 RPM, it's adding 64% more torque and horsepower. So 
you gotta be careful of running nitrous down too low in the RPM. You don't want this percentage increase to go up too high. 50% starts becoming a significant number for nitrous. You can go above 100% in fact, but um, temperatures go way up. Um, anyway, so with I've got this setting, which is um, just flatten the torque curve with the nitrous. I have another calculation, oh, sorry, not wrong one, um, where if you run nitrous 100% of the time, um, you don't get any more horsepower. You still only end up with a 300 horsepower motor, but you end up with a lot more mid-range torque. And then if you go uh, to the 80 horsepower jets, you're up to a little under 320 horsepower. And again, big numbers. See down low here, you know, you're, you're, you're running uh, massive increases in torque over the stock motor. Um, probably won't be running below 4,000 RPM on the nitrous, but it's starting to already get into that 70% range, so the temperatures will get up. But when I'm running this car at the track, typically it's above 5,000 RPM. And I should still be fine at the 80 horsepower. So let's call up my drag racing program. Um, this is a, uh, uh, let's see if I got all the tables here. So this program, uh, this drag racing analyzer uh, Pro 2.0 has a ton of simulation capability. You can go in and um, set up a ton of things. So with the engine, uh, what I have here is, uh, and this one is the, um, stock motor and uh, then you would go back and look at things like the transmission and I've got where all my transmission ratios are 97% uh, efficiency from a manual transmission and um, I'm leaving a lot of things sort of for the, for the program to um, go through so um, I don't modify every setting here but embody an axle i'm using a front wheel drive car 2100 pounds and um 33 of the weight on the rear tires and it um and the, the wheelbase so this is giving me uh, the drag coefficient um that's correct for the car close to being correct and frontal area that's being correct and for drag and um, so there's lots of Good information there. And then wheels and tires, I'm running Hoosier drag slicks, um, and they're 225-50-15s. So this is set up for the traction of that type of compound and uh, the diameter of the wheel and all that kind of stuff. And then the driving technique, um, I'm launching at 4,000 RPM, and I'm using this setting which is let the computer decide what the best setting for, for slipping the clutch is to hold maximum acceleration without slipping the tires too much. And that's going to be me. I'll be the computer trying to hold the tires at the edge of traction um, and not letting either, either by not putting 100% power down in first gear or by slipping the clutch or a combination of the two. And then how fast you can row. So a one-two shift is straight north-south, so I can do that in a quarter of a second, and then it takes a little longer to get to third, and then back again to fourth. I don't need to worry about fifth. I won't be going there. So once you've set all this stuff up, you you can you can basically go and say calculate ET, and it says the car runs a 12.3 second quarter mile time slip at 112 and a half miles an hour, and you can see the 60 foot time 1.9 seconds. That's piss poor, but it's a front wheel drive car, and you're just you know, you're only getting you can see here on this column here, it's the amount of weight on the front. You can see you're only getting, even though there's 67% of the weight is on the front, as soon as you accelerate, you're actually losing because the, the vehicle is leaning backwards and it's actually unloading the front tires, which is the classic problem drag racing a front wheel drive car. So you run a solid motor mount, you run really stiff springs, and you try to eliminate or reduce the amount of um, front and rear weight transfer because you need as much weight on those driving wheels as possible. But what you're seeing here is that the stock motor uh, is capable of a serious time slip, a 12.29, uh, 12.30 time slip. Um, this is Probably I'm not going to get there, at least not initially. I'll have to work at it to try to get close to these numbers. But um, just show you what the um, 
a graph looks like. So um, basically, you can see here, this is 0.8 Gs. So on the left-hand side, it's like 1 G, 0.8 Gs. It's just like everything's been normalized for over here. Engine RPM is blue. Um, speed is in green. Acceleration is light blue. And then the throttle is in red. And so uh, 10,000 happens to be 100 miles an hour. It also happens to be 1 G. It also happens to be 10,000 RPM. So you see they're reusing this as sort of a generic um, scale, vertical scale. And the reason why things start before zero time is because of what's called rollout. The people that are drag racers, they'll understand that. That rollout is you're about 10 inches before the lights if you uh, deep stage, uh, shallow stage, and then you're basically the car is already moving when it hits the lights. And so you're getting maybe 0.2 seconds of, uh, of free acceleration. Um, and you see with the drag slicks, you're above, say, 0.83 G. If I click on this, it'll tell you. So over here, it says 0.83 Gs. And uh, what's interesting about this is if I click in this section here in second gear, it says I'm 0.497 Gs. So I've been recording with my car, my acceleration, um, with my accelerometer, at about 0.5 Gs up past, um, and it says I'm shifting here at 75 miles an hour out of second gear, because I've got taller tires, the drag slicks are taller, whereas my street tires, the snowflakes and the 185 60 14s, I'm about 71, 72 miles an hour the top of second gear because I've got the longer final drive ratio so anyway what it's saying is that I've got less acceleration here than I'm actually measuring so this is a good thing this is a little bit conservative relative to what my car is doing so maybe my car is putting a little bit more power than, than I'm estimating right now but at least this is confirmation that it's expecting me with the engine being normally aspirated to be pulling about a half a G in second gear um, and it's going to be a question as to whether or not I'll be able to maintain that a great, greater than 0.8 G's of acceleration in first gear without breaking the tires. Um, so let's go and look at what happens when you add just the basic amount of nitrous. And there's all these previous passes down here in the history. So I can just click on one of them and just load the file. It's just a faster way of doing it. And uh, grab what I just do. Um, so let's go back and let's just check the engine. Yeah, so my engine is, see there's my flat torque curve, uh, 200 foot pounds of torque everywhere except for 8,000 where it dips off a little bit. So um, yeah, so that's all loaded. So if I calculate ET, I'm at 11.84 at 117 miles an hour. Uh, basically the same 60 foot time because we have this problem with with traction in first gear so even without nitrous we have a traction problem and you can see there's the computer trying to hold the um the uh the clutch he's slipping the crap out of the clutch in fact to hold the rpm at 8,000. but basically what's happening is you're not getting any more traction you're still at that 0.83 g's but then over here your 0.6 G's in second gear. So you can start to see how, how the nitrous is, is, is producing more power. And um, so um, it's pretty stout with that tiny amount of nitrous. Now, if I open the 60 horsepower jets to 100%, um, so I'm not holding back on the nitrous, I'm letting it flow in at all times, then what happens is you end up with, um, um, let's see, let's run the numbers here. So there's the engine, 231 foot pounds. Um, and then I'm at 11.4 at 120.5 miles an hour. And it, uh, you know, it's a pretty stout uh, engine. Um, again, I'm not getting really any more power but uh, or it's showing me with a little bit more traction here. Um, but then in second gear, you can see I'm throwing a lot more power down. Um, and I'm accelerating hard here at uh, 0.7 Gs in second gear. 
So uh, big question as to whether the tires will handle that. And uh, then the 80 horsepower nitrous. Again, we'll load it. We'll load that one up. And this is where you know I may be blowing up the motor, uh, not blowing it up, but having to change to colder plugs and back off the timing more and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll run the ET down to 11.3. So this thing's really rocking at almost 124 miles an hour. Um, and uh, putting that power down again, <laughs> look at this, in second gear, right? Like it's pulling the same amount of torque um, in second gear on the wheels, acceleration the second, you know, as it is in first gear almost. So this thing's like hugely stout. And uh, I didn't show you the 60 mile an hour time, but when you when you get to 60 miles an hour, and I'll click on it here, and um, yeah, so there's 59.4 miles an hour at 3.2 seconds. So to review with the slicks, I'm at just under four seconds, it's normally aspirated motor, but you have to add this rollout time to be honest. So I'll be about 4.2 seconds, 0 to 60 with the normally aspirated motor and about 3.4 seconds with the 80 horsepower nitrous and about 3.6 seconds with the 60 horse nitrous. And so this car certainly is getting down there into that supercar territory in terms of three seconds, 0 to 60 time um, with a little bit of nitrous in it. So anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy looking at that. Uh, we'll um, shoot a video. I've got I've ordered my drag slicks on um, 15 by 8 inch ultra lightweight rims Hopefully I got the offset correct. They're the same inky uh, Racing lightweight rims that I've got for I, I got them on 15 by 7 for the road course on the Hoosier A7s Which are road course tires and then I'm going Hoosier drag radials and instead of running 30 plus pounds of pressure on the road course, I'm only going to be running 15, 16, 17 pounds of pressure on the drag radials. Um, so that's going to be fun. So there we go. Hope that was interesting. And uh, it's theoretical, but it's giving you an idea that the car is already producing some good power numbers. The simulator is, you know, showing, showing me what I'm supposed to be uh, doing. So there we go.